Welcome to Fantasy Sports Daily with Ray Flowers, Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Don't forget to use the promo code FSD20 for a 20% discount on the products over at FantasyGuru.com. Welcome to Fantasy Sports Daily. I'm your host, Ray Flowers. Thanks for spending some time with me today. Thanks for spending some time with me every day. Uh, Monday through Friday at 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Uh, normally, it's been me rambling on here kind of solo uh, recently. We're going to have a visitor today. We'll see that in a second here when we talk about what we're going to do today. But again, welcome to the site, fantasyguru.com. Welcome to us. If you're watching us on YouTube at youtube.com slash plus network, that's right. You can watch as well as listen to this show. And maybe you're not aware of that. Maybe you haven't taken up us up on that. The place to watch the live stream live is at youtube.com slash plus network. Now, after that, we post the show in podcast form on fantasyguru.com and just go to the top, click Elite Plus, and that brings it up. You can also find us on your local podcast networks. We're on Pandora, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Just type in Fantasy Sports Daily after the fact, and you can listen to us that way in a podcast form. Again, I'm Ray Flowers. You can follow me on Twitter, X, Instagram, threads, at the Ray Flowers. Type in at the Ray Flowers. I think I even have a TikTok. I don't use it, but I have one. Uh, Jeff Vance is the TikTok guy at fantasyguru.com. But um, there, if you want to ask me questions, obviously you can ask me questions at the website, fantasyguru.com. You'll see that on the screen there. Actually, let me verify that. I haven't checked the last day. I didn't see if we uh, changed the price point. Use the promo code FSD20, FSD20. That'll get you a discount over at fantasyguru.com. It gets a 20% discount uh, for the product, the full season product. You get all the rankings, all the articles, access to Discord, all throughout the regular season at fantasyguru.com, we'll have you covered. Uh, as of right now, the uh, yeah seasonal package is still the same price. We never upped it. Oh my gosh, we never upped it. So if you use that promo code, it is indeed forty dollars to sign up at fantasyguru.com. Now another package that we keep talking about, you might notice on the screen there if you're watching with us, it's at a discount. Yeah, it was already at a discount. It's at an even greater discount. We've slashed the price by almost half. Now, if you sign up for the all-in package, you get NBA, NHL, PGA, MMA, soccer, racing. All of them, one package. All of them, DFS. All of them, wagering, $39.99. $39.99. So sign up with us for all of those deals, all of those pack sports, excuse me, and get rocking and rolling with us as well. Okay. What are we talking about today? Well, here's the rundown. This is what we're talking about today. The guest that's going to be joining us is Justin Fensmer. We're going to talk a little hoops. He's going to be, I think, coming in every Tuesday. That's kind of the plan with Justin. So we'll have him in today. We'll talk a little hoops. Before we get there, we'll talk about news and notes, including a dagger to the heart of us at fantasyguru.com on the hill. Um, tons of pitchers and continuing to be injured. we got some playing time situations to talk about. we got some performance issues to talk about in spring. So we'll talk about all of that. Again, use the promo code FSD20, FSD20 uh, for that uh, ability to sign up for a discount with the products at fantasyguru.com. And, you know, it's really interesting. Um, I'm running the poll again, and let me pull it up the first time I had it up, and then it disappeared on me because that's how that's how this Monday morning is working, folks. Or Monday morning. See, I don't even know what day it is. That's how that Tuesday morning is working for me. Jeez, it's pretty bad. I ran a poll back on the 20th of February, so what, almost a month ago, a little over a month ago, five weeks ago. Would you play in an offense-only league in 2024? No pitching, just hitting. I ran the poll. 12% of people said maybe. 32% said yes. 56% said no, not doing that. I'm running the same poll again right now. Again, over on Twitter X, at the Ray Flowers, you can go over there and vote. Would you play in an offense-only league in fantasy baseball? No is now 52%. Yes is up to 48%. I wonder if that has to do with some of the news that we're talking about today mm, or some of the news that's gone transpired over the last couple of weeks. The bottom line is this, and we've had a lot of discussion on social media, a lot of discussion in the Discord about this. Jeff Manns has come out and said, I'm not taking pitchers in like the first 10 rounds. Uh, I've written articles early, middle, and late pitching. We've talked about it a lot here on the show, in articles. Uh, I, you know, I have always said you have to play your draft and you do have to play your draft. If everyone's going pitching early, you got to get in at some point. If no one's taking pitching early, ride it out, get those hitters. Um, 
there's a lot of people that I think are coming to the point now. It's like, well, guys are getting injured every 15 minutes on the hill. Yeah. That's why I've been saying for years now, don't take pitching early. It's why we talked about the other day. I think it was yesterday on the show how it's fascinating in ADP that guys get hurt on the hill. And all that happens is people elevate to conveyor belt. The next pitcher up takes that spot instead of saying, well, let's back off pitching on the draft. Let's pull back a little bit because these guys keep getting hurt. We just keep elevating the next guy to the spot. Right, wrong, the season has to play out for us to determine that. But it is extremely, extremely risky to build your team with pitching early because there's volatility with pitching in general, of course. Then these injuries, yes, players get hurt too, but there's just less significant injury for batters. Batters can tweak something and pull something and work through it and can't on the pitching now. So let's dive into that. That's kind of the, the theme we're, we're talking about every day here. Uh, we'll start out with some positive news because we're going to get some negative news. <laughs> let's start with some positive news. Kevin Gaussman has had the shoulder issue uh, through three innings on Monday against the Pirates, through 52 pitches. The velocity was good. It was it was right on, if not slightly above, where it was last year, which is great to see. He threw 52 pitches, which obviously needs him to – he still needs to build up, but that's a great start for him coming back from the shoulder issue. It's possible that he doesn't even miss a start. I remember we were talking about one to two starts being the likely scenario for him missing. It sounds like the, the Blue Jays are considering starting him the first time through the rotation. Now, if they do that, he just threw 52 pitches. He's probably going to be 65 to 70 pitches, so it's not going to be a full game. He's not throwing seven innings or anything like that. There's a chance Kevin Gaussman can make his first trip through the rotation and, you know, he could throw five innings. There's a possibility of that. So this is very good news given where we were three weeks ago or two weeks ago, I guess, with Gaussman. Uh, we'll see. You know, obviously this is something to continue to track because I've got a shoulder issue. I've worked through it. I look great for 52 pitches. How does it handle when he gets up to 90 pitches? How does he handle it when he's going start after start? Is this something that's going to linger all season long? Is he going to blow past it? We talked about Gaussman and the fact that he should be able to work through this. He's got the experience. They're obviously aware of the scenario, so they can do whatever necessary behind the scenes, you know, medically to take care of it. So good news with Kevin Gaussman. There's a chance he doesn't even miss a start, though it could be a truncated start. Now, let's start the bad news. <laughs> My favorite here at 8 o'clock in the morning Pacific time uh, on Fantasy Sports Daily. It's reasonable to say, which means it's going to happen, according to manager John Schneider of the Blue Jays, that Jordan Romano and Eric Swanson will both start the season on the injured list. This is not a surprise. Both guys dealing with arm issues. Both guys have been throwing. Uh, they've been playing catch. They haven't had any setbacks. Uh, they're going to throw some bullpens before they get back up against live hitters. Um, they're not going to rush these guys back. They're very important, obviously, to what the team wants to do this season. Arguably, they're number one and two relievers. What does this mean? This means, you know, they're starting on the IL. This means we're probably missing half of April. Let's just call it that. That's, I think, given where we are today, probably best case. Now, these guys don't need to build up, right? You know, one or two outings and we're, we throw, you know, 36 pitches, we're good to go, right? They don't need to build up like a starting pitcher, but they've got to be able to use all their pitches. they got to feel comfortable, all those kind of things. So let's say it's April 15th. And, you know, in the grand scheme, if a reliever misses two weeks, you know, Romano doesn't get 37 saves, he gets 33 saves, right? Okay. So if he if he's able to stay healthy, we've dropped him in the rankings at fantasyguru.com as we have to because we don't know when he's going to be healthy. We don't know if this is going to linger. I mean, that's just the smart way to play this. He had had some hiccups here and there, but he's always pitched through it in the past. And so we kind of got to give him a little, little leeway here with the situation with his health. But, you know, that's, it's a concern. Uh, by the way, the closer grid will be updated today at fantasyguru.com. So look for that. All kinds of breaking news there, of course, because, you know, that's that's fun. Let's play some more roulette with relievers. Uh, but Romano starting the season on the Angeles. Swanson starting the season on the Angeles. They're number one and two. Means that Yimmy Garcia is likely to get some work early. Now, if you, if you have the ability to run the waiver wire and you haven't already done so, grab Yimmy Garcia. He might get you four saves, right? And then Romano's back and Swanson's back and all that kind of thing. There's a chance that, you know, the four saves for Garcia becomes 14 because these guys are, you know, beat up a little bit. You know, that kind of, there's a chance that the 14 becomes 24, right? Um, they have other arms in the bullpen. Nate Pearson, I mean, Nate Pearson is 6'6", 250, and he throws 99 miles an hour. Failed starter. He was supposed to be a number one starter at the big league level. Hasn't been able to stay healthy. He could work into the ninth inning. So, Check out the report when it comes out today at fantasyguru.com. I'll go through all these scenarios, list the names, all that kind of stuff. But Yimmy Garcia is the guy right now to target. 
if you um, kind of went like I did in a lot of my drafts, which kind of the middle way of uh, pitching and, and not really focusing on the bullpen. Uh, Justin Verlander, I guess this is good news. I could have start with this too with Justin Verlander. His shoulder is supposed to be okay. He's hit all the, the spots and the check marks and everything's been positive with his return from that issue. Uh, he's going to throw two innings of live batting practice on Tuesday. If that goes well, he'll throw another BP session and then go out on a rehab assignment. I mean, it's maybe mid-April he's back, probably late April. They're really slow playing this based upon just the, the way the new cycle has gone. You know, again, it's it's Justin Verlander. He's been around forever. You got to figure he's going to figure this out. I hate saying the same word twice in a row. You got to figure he will figure it out. At least I added a word there. But isn't it a little bit of a concern that, you know, he, and in his age? And remember, his elbow was repaired surgically, not his shoulder. So it seems like he'll be fine. Just miss a few starts. That's our operating assumption right now. I think that's what we got to go with. Now, here's the dagger to the heart. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Brian Wu is someone that was uh, written very, written about very fondly at FantasyGuru.com. A, I saw this injury news come about, and it was in the posted it immediately in the in the Discord at FantasyGuru.com, and people were there was crying in the streets. Let's just put it that way. Now, the positive news is this: the injury to Brian Wu of the Seattle Mariners doesn't, as of right now. Can't hold me to this because these things change in 10 minutes. Because Brian Wu, I didn't see reports about him having an injury at all anyway. Apparently, he tried to throw. He didn't feel right. They went and ran the tests. And they were like, okay, let's figure this out. Is this, fingers crossed, this going to be something? Eee! Surgery, long term. They ran the tests and nothing was found. They found elbow inflammation. The current plan is to shut him down for seven to ten days and then build him back up okay that's the plan emerson hancock is likely to take his spot in the rotation to start the year emerson hancock is supposed to be supposed to be someone that throws 180 innings at the big league level for, for years uh, he's had a a winding road as a prospect kind of a really high-end prospect then saw his star diminish lost some velocity this year was back his pitch mix, the shape of his pitch is a little bit different. The velocity is back. People are starting to get a little more excited about him. He'll get a chance to make some starts in the rotation. And, you know, again, this is a, I mean, B-plus kind of prospect at this point. Like, really good prospect. Like, he could be a very effective pitcher for those of you looking for a stopgap in deeper leagues. Back to Wu. The 7 to 10 days shut down and then build him back up thing is their expectation at this point. When looking at Brian Wu, and I wrote about him again over at FantasyGuru.com, you know, was he going to throw 180 innings this year? No, he wasn't going to throw 180. Like, that wasn't going to happen. Maybe, let's be positive, let's try. Maybe this just means that there's going to be little pressure to him for him to do that. The Mariners hope to have success this year and potentially a playoff run. Maybe, you know, starting slowly here will allow him to pitch all season long and still have some oomph left in the playoffs, right? Because he'll end the season throwing 142 innings instead of throwing 172 innings. That'll be my hope right now. Now, is that reasonable? Based upon the information we have right now, it is. We'll see. Uh, the rankings have been adjusted as they are on a daily basis at fantasyguru.com. I know that most of you have probably already drafted. Some of you still haven't. So we're updating the rankings all the way to opening day. After the rankings have been op updated to opening day, the official opening day, not last week. Um, after they've been updated to that point, they'll be updated the first of every month, May, June, July, August, September, the first of every month rankings will all be redone. So we've adjusted the rankings. Fingers crossed it with Brian Wu. It is exactly what they said. It, maybe it is exactly what they said today. And then 10 days from now, he tries to do something and it's bad. But the good news is structurally, the elbow seems sound. That's what we all worry about. So there's not a blowout potential as of now with Brian Wu. Fingers crossed. Knock on wood, whatever you want to do. Okay, here's the other big injury news of the day. And, you know, this, <laughs> this is why, and I've talked about this a lot. And this is why I've said, and, and people have pushed back against me, and I think for good reason, right? To be fair. Uh, people don't, people want to play what they've always played in terms of format. They've always used saves. There's a cachet, like, you don't, not a lot of eighth inning guys are in the Hall of Fame, right? Closers in the Hall of Fame. Using saves stinks. Why? Paul Sewell goes down with an injury here. He's got a grade two strain of his left oblique. That's going to cost him a month. 
let's just call it what it is. It's going to cost him a month. And that might be three weeks. It might be six weeks. It's going to cost him a month. So he's been adjusted in the rankings at fantasyguru.com. Um, so what do we do now? Who do we grab? Do we just grab Kevin Ginkle and it's Yippie Kaye? I, I don't know. We're guessing. And I hate this. So what has happened in the last you know 12 hours since this news story broke is that everyone's run to the waiver wire. They're grabbing Ginkle. They're grabbing McCuff. They're grabbing you know Castro because no one knows. How is that fun? I, I'm legitimately asking everyone, how is that fun? How do you enjoy doing that? Because people tell me all the time they enjoy the, the chase. They enjoy the way that – guess you enjoy guessing? I just – I don't understand that. I had a good question this morning that was asked, hey, Ram in a Solds League, Yiner Cano – Kevin Ginkle with the news with Seawald, how much does Ginkle move up or does he move up in a sold scenario? Perfect question. That's the right question to ask because that's the right format you should be playing in. Saves plus holds. And I said, we'll move Ginkle up a couple of spots, but really it doesn't change much because Seawald didn't blow out his arm. Again, my expectation is he misses about a month. Ginkle's going to be a high leverage guy, seventh, eighth, ninth inning. You know, he's going to be getting saves or holds. So to me, this doesn't appreciably change his outlook in a sold setup. In a save setup, it it appreciably changes his outlook. But again, what if it's Castro and McGuff, Scott McGuff that gets the, the, the night work at the ninth inning? What if they all three of them share it? That's something too. A lot of times when the team's number one goes down, and we see this all the time, when the team's number one goes down, the number two doesn't take over. The number two becomes the lead guy and the number three guy's involved. So we don't have one guy now saving games. We have two guys saving games. So again, this continually, continually, continually um, happens. Uh, Mark Patterson, I don't know if this is a closer monkey makes it fun. I don't, tell me more, Mark. I don't know what that means. Um, but yeah, I, I we got another one of those scenarios right now. Um, that's actually the second scenario. Again, I said Yimmy Garcia earlier for the uh, the Blue Jays. That's the expectation. That doesn't mean that's exactly, that doesn't mean Garcia is getting every save opportunity by any means. It doesn't mean he's going to get the first save opportunity, right? I don't enjoy this. Other people do. We're already dealing with it before the season's even begun. And that's the frustrating thing here, which is why I asked, would you play in an offense only league? The season hasn't even started and guys are literally getting hurt and going on the injury list every half hour. I mean, I was sitting here getting ready for my elite sports show, which is Monday through Thursday on Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio with Justin Fensterman, who will be on in a few minutes to talk with us about some hoops. I was getting ready for the show last night, prepping and everything, and I'm looking at the news, and like just injury, 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 starting on the season, on the aisle, starting on the aisle. Um, we're going to have a situation with uh, um, Randall Gritchick. has got an ankle issue. He's going on the aisle. His team, The teammate of Seawald and, and, and Gritchick, um, Ginkle. Happens all the time. How about this next story? Garrett Mitchell, who some people are getting excited about it, a really strong spring. He's going to be in the starting lineup for the Brewers. He's got a fractured left hand. He's going to start the season on the injury list. I mean, where, where, you know, it it happens. It happens. It happens. Now that's a, those are two hitters, so those would impact the offense only league. Okay, but this is just a scenario where, and someone jokingly called the players soft. And I said, well, I you know, are they? And I had this running. I even talked to Justin Fenstrom about this. Who's softer, baseball players or basketball players? Um. Oh, Mark. Oh, Mark. So Mark is saying it's a website that has a newsletter on bullpen. We also have the closer grid that's updated every week at fantasyguru.com and the rankings. So we have that to hear too. But okay, if anyone wants to get a newsletter, closer monkey, I guess that's a source people can utilize. Um, we're getting these injuries and they're just, they're flying, 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 flying. And the Garrett Mitchell one is tough because Garrett Mitchell was a player that a lot of folks were, you know, I got multiple people asking me questions about Garrett Mitchell and you know, a, a fracture in his left hand. He's going to start the season on the injury list. How long does, does that go? We don't know. Um, the team was non-committal as to what the plan really is. Multiple guys are going to get a shot. We're going to have, I mean, it, it's possible that, you know, Pat Murphy kind of said that Reese Hoskins even could see some time in the outfield to open up the infield a little bit. So we'll see what happens here. Uh, maybe Joey Weimer, who was, you know, I think he was sent down. Maybe he's recalled because they need help in the outfield. That's a scenario where, you know, the people that were pinning their hopes late on, on Garrett Mitchell uh, coming through, obviously a little disappointed. Another outfielder, and this is something that I wrote yesterday, and I still haven't seen an update officially this morning. Uh, let me do a quick check here uh, because that would be some big news. Uh, Dylan Carlson, the erstwhile prospect of the Cardinals, who actually had one good season. 
but then, yeah, so there's no new update here. Um, had one good season and then has fallen on hard times. He just has not been able to live up to expectations. He has not been able to find his game. This was an elite level offensive prospect, Dylan Carlson. He was a 2025 home run hitter. He was a guy that was going to steal 15 to 20 bases, play good defense. Like the Cardinals really loved him, and so did the world. So, what happened? Well, he was removed with a shoulder injury. Still gathering information. As I said, I just checked. I didn't see an update this morning. And I put in the Discord yesterday. I don't know if this is going to play out. I don't know what the situation is with Carlson. I don't know if he's going to miss three days, three months. I don't know. But go add Victor Scott. Victor Scott had a good spring. He impressed the Cardinals. We've talked about him here on the show. I've written about him at fantasyguru.com. Victor Scott, I think, stole 94 bases last year. Uh, he is Asturi Ruiz, but probably a little bit better offensively, to be honest. I don't know if he'd get the call. I think that seems very reasonable. I, again, don't know how much time Dylan Carlson's going to miss. But Dylan Scott, the minute he's called up, becomes a potential difference-making player in the steals column. The bat is not impressive, and he's not going to hit 20 home runs, and he probably won't bat 270. Like, he's not – when I say he's better than Asturi Ruiz, that's not really saying much. Um, but I could see an Asturi Ruiz type of season, as I think everyone could, from Victor Scott if he is indeed given a chance to play every day. So that's the kind of proactive thinking that, you know, if you have someone that just went on the injured list yesterday, you had, you know, Paul Seawald in your league allows you to put him on the injured list, put him on the injured list, go add Victor Scott, no harm, no foul. You know, don't go out and drop a player that you're counting on, right? But maybe a reserve round guy, that bullpen arm you took a shot on late, that second short, second baseman you don't really need. It's worth being proactive because, again, depending on your format and the way waivers run and all that, Victor Scott gets called up, could be extremely expensive for your league. Wade Miley's going to throw a simulated game on Wednesday. He's coming back from a shoulder issue. The Brewers desperately need Wade Miley to go out there and make 25 quality starts. And by, said, by that, I mean not actual quality starts, but starts of quality, I guess was a better way to say it. They desperately need that in the rotation. Uh, and Wade Miley, to his credit, the last couple of years has been very effective at doing that. There's, uh, there's no strikeouts here to get excited about. There's no upside to get excited about with Wade Miley. Wade Miley also has um, dealt with physical issues himself, so he's really hit or miss. But when he's been on the hill, he's been effective. And that's obviously the hope with the Brewers, again, who are dealing with all kinds of issues with their, their pitching staff, especially at the starting spot. Um, Brian Cashman said the following, that DJ LeMay will start the season on the injury list because of the foot issue. Not a surprise. That's kind of where we saw this thing trending. Looks like Oswaldo Cabrera is going to start as a third baseman. Again, not surprising, not exciting. Let's not get ahead of ourselves and care too much about that. But here's the news that matters. And this is something that I talked about previously. It seems like against left-handed pitching, Glaber Torres is going to bat lead off with DJ LeMahieu out. So he'll get some starts against lefties. Here's the potentially exciting news. Alex Verdugo is likely to hit lead off against right-handed pitching while DJ LeMahieu is out. And I've talked about you know, Verdugo previously has no heat, no excitement. No one cares about Verdugo. He's getting drafted in reserve rounds in mixed leagues. He's a 285 14 home run, 65 RBI guy. That's who he is. It's going to steal you five to 10 bases. Like he's a very average major league hitter. The good news is he plays every day, plays good defense, and now he might hit leadoff. Now, we don't know how long DJ LeMay is going to be out. We don't know if, you know, when his mini, immediately when he returns, he goes into the leadoff spot because he's not a leadoff guy. Like that seems bad casting anyway. If Alex Rodrigo bats leadoff for this team and he has his, you know, his normal 345 on base percentage, Dude scores 90 plus runs. Like he could score 100 runs. So Verdugo is someone that, you know, if you're kicking around in draft still and he's there in the reserve rounds, take a shot. If you're looking at the waiver wire and you need a boost in the outfield and you see Alex Verdugo there, take a shot. He could end up solidifying himself at the top of the rotation for the Yankees. And if he does that, he's going to be a very valuable fantasy contributor in 2024. Uh, Tyler, for those people that follow these things, Tyler Alexander has made the rotation for the Angels or for the excuse me for the Rays according to Jason Stark. Ray, I thought Tyler Alexander, yeah, you, that Tyler Alexander. <laughs> now, Jason Stark also said that he's likely to be used as an opener. Okay, so what does that mean? You know, and th this is really hard in the fantasy space because when a a player is called an opener, and I think Ryan Yarbrough is kind of the famous example. You know, he makes four, he's been making 14 starts and throwing 75 innings, right? When you're an opener, 
you're, you have no value in the fantasy space. You're, you're league only value because obviously you're, you're not going deep enough into a game to get a victory. So that wipes out that piece completely. So all you become is a, is a middle reliever. And, you know, guys like Matt Stram or even Ryan Yarbrough in the right scenario in a points league, you know, in a head to head. So, okay, there's value there. But in a traditional, like five by five roto kind of league, they have no value. You're just getting four innings or three and a third innings of one run ball, you know. So the Rays figured out, they always do. Uh, the Rays always have injuries, they always do and still figure it out. So that'll be a scenario to keep an eye on, but just an update of that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, Great. Dave Roberts announced that on uh, that the Tyler Glasnow will start the team's home opener on Thursday. So he'll be followed by Bobby Miller, uh, Yoshinobu Yamamoto, and Gavin Stone. So just an FYI there of how the Dodgers are going to run things. And this uh, triggers a, a, a point in my head here. I don't know if everyone is aware of this or not. You probably are. Look, come on, I'll give you all credit. You're aware of this. We do DFS at fantasyguru.com. And um, we have a GPP which is a, a guaranteed prize pool, which is the big leagues where, you know, you put in 30 bucks or whatever, or 10 bucks and you're trying to win a million dollars. We have those articles too. I write the cash game breakdown, which is more of let's double our money. We're going to put 10 bucks in tonight. We're going to win 950 back. Okay. Uh, and I, I do that during the week uh, for fantasyguru.com. The package is now available. It starts at $199 and 99 cents. Would you say, whoa, Ray, that's pretty expensive. Now compared to the seasonal product, it is. But understand that product is normally $300. Understand that you get day after day after day advice, including from me, on how to how to do this. You get also the postseason access. So, you know, this doesn't, this, this MLB season pass for DFS is through the entire season. It's not just the regular season, it's through the entire season. You get access to projections and ownership rates. Um, you get articles, betting props, cheat sheets, tools private chat in the Discord, all of that, all season long at fantasyguru.com. So click the Join Now tab in the top right. Make sure you do that. Sign up for the, the DFS package seasonal. So get involved with us there. You can have a lot of fun, make some money too. Uh, the final note I wanted to get before we go to Justin Fensterman here, to talk some hoops. The final note I wanted to get to is that, you know, spring training numbers, what to make of numbers, what not to make of numbers. We don't have time for a full discussion of this, but let me say it quickly. The numbers can tell you a lot about a player in spring training. They can tell you very little about a player in spring training. Let's use an example. Yesterday, or yesterday, Brady Singer, eight strikeouts, six scoreless innings. Brady Singer is going to get back to where he was a couple years ago in the second half. Oh, he did that against double A guys. So you have to you have to know who the, the matchup is against, when the matchup occurred, what is the pitcher working on? Sometimes pitchers go out there and they throw sinker, 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 because they're trying to find their sinker. Sometimes it's curveball, curveball, curveball. They're not trying to get guys out. They're working on things. Maybe the guy is a, is a consistent fastball slider guy early in the count. Today, he's going to go change up curveball early in the count, right? He's going to change things up and work on things. So that's part of that. Hitters as well could be working on things. They could be working on hitting the ball the other way. They could be working on pulling the ball more. That's not necessarily what they're going to do when the season starts. So just a word of caution to not take too much from spring training stats. Like Logan Webb has been terrible. So we've dropped him a couple of spots, but like two spots in the rankings. Like let's not overreact to that. Wyatt Langford's been fantastic. Okay, but let's not overreact to that. I think he goes 25-25 this year, though some people in the fantasy space are. Use the numbers and the production that helps in, that comes in spring training or has come in spring training as a nice foundation to do some further analysis of a player. But don't just go and look at who's the spring leaders are and then go do a draft tonight. That would be a mistake if you went about it that way. A uh, couple of questions before we get to Justin. Uh, Greg Martinez, morning, Ray. Hello, Greg. You doing Dynasty draft pickups next month? Uh, I don't think... Tell me more here, um, Greg. But no, I, I don't have any intention next month of Dynasty draft pickups. I don't know what that even means. We'll do the rankings next month. Uh, and there we obviously have the, 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 the rookie rankings that are available right now for 2024. We have that. Tell me a little bit more. Doug Montgomery asked about Dylan Cruz. Dylan Cruz is going to start the season at double A. Uh, he had a little bit of a slow spring, which is no, no big deal. Again, it's just spring. Uh, a luminous talent. He'll be up at some point this season, very likely um, earlier rather than later. Mid-season or earlier, I think, is, is doable with Dylan Cruz. 
know, they've got the Senzel, Winker, Gallo experiment. They're going on with the Nationals. All these old guys that may or may not stay healthy and may or may not perform. You know, if these three guys are, are limping along, hitting 220 with nine home runs after two months, you know, so there's a chance that Dylan Cruz comes up a lot sooner than we expect. There's also a chance that James Wood is called up first. That's possible. But I expect both Wood and Cruz, uh, Dylan Cruz to be seen this season, probably by midseason with the Nationals. Okay, so there's some questions to answer. You can fire a few more. And I'll see if uh, after our visit here with Justin, if we can get to any of those. Speaking of Justin, there is a gentleman called Justin Fensterman. And Justin Fensterman is someone that you can hear on this show on, I'm trying to find it, on Tuesdays with us talking hoops. He's also someone, there it is, that you can find on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday on Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio on Elite Sports Game Time. So let's bring him in, Justin Fensterman, with a Warriors jersey on. Justin, how you doing, buddy? Ray, it's been such a long time since we've spoken, so it's great to be back on with you after all this time. Oh, Justin, what a gentleman. I forgot to put my headphone in. There, now I got you. I was thinking you were, thinking you were silent, and I'm the idiot that didn't have the headphone in. Um, so we, we do the show every night, uh, Monday through Thursday, Elite, Elite Sports Game Time on uh, Series XM. And we've been covering hockey. We've been covering basketball. Baseball obviously starts up this week. We'll get to get into that. We kind of got a light slate tonight for basketball, right? Last night it was hockey. There were only two games. Tonight there's only four games. Um, and the Warriors have a matchup against the Heat. Um, who are we using from the Warriors here? Talk to me about the Warriors. Like, I want to use everyone from the Warriors because I'm a homer, Justin, but is that a good idea? No, it's not a good idea. Not at all. He did play a very good defense, Ray. We've, okay. been, we've been talking for a long time about Steph Curry and the volatility I don't want to mess with that. Terry Rozier is a pretty good defender, so I'm not going that direction, and I see other players at that price point and other matchups that I'd rather spend on. But some of the players that we could look at include their forwards. Jonathan Kaminga, for some reason, the Heat's one area of defense is that power forward spot, and that's weird to say because Jimmy Butler's there, so you'd think that Jimmy Butler would take the prioritized forward on the other side and limit the overall forward production. It just hasn't been happening, though, and the Heat have been banged up at that spot, too. So it makes me a little bit more positive with Jonathan Kaminga, just a little bit, even Draymond Green to an extent. But for the most part, when it comes to trust for this team, I'm looking at Jonathan Kaminga. I'm looking at Klay Thompson as well, because Pajemski just can't be trusted. He hasn't been as productive consistently as we're used to seeing. And then we got to see if he plays Ray, but Trace Jackson Davis is someone that could be a little bit more of a volume producer if this game for some reason does get out of hand and the Heat decide to just completely limit the Warriors' offense and then get way ahead. So we'll have to see if he plays, but that's also somebody that I'm keeping my eye on. So as good as we, as much as we love the Warriors, and for years we've loved this offense, they've become a very hard team to trust for DFS. Behind you, Justin, you have a basketball hoop, a little Nerf hoop there. How often are you shooting at that hoop? A, a lot. A lot, actually. It's like my daughter and I like play like horse all the time now. When it Who comes wins? to that hoop, oh, she does, of course. Come yeah. on, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm an athlete, not an athlete. You know, <laughs> I'm a varsity <laughs> bowler. Okay, <laughs> yeah, you're a bowler. By the way, Justin was the captain of his bowling team. Yes, for two years, and I was the 2002 most improved player as well for Oyster Bay High School. Yay! Did you have a? Did you did you have a? Did you have team shirts and everything that said Oyster yep. Bay on the back and the whole deal? Yep. Purple shirts are my high school's colors were purple and gold. Nice. So it was a nice purple shirt. So it was like Team Barney going in. Were you a down and in player? Or were you a cranker? So it's wow. You, you know a lot more about I, this. I, I, so yeah. so when I first started bowling, and I you know I had a very natural kind of down the middle throw. So I started as a down and in throw, mm -hmm. but then. I was given a bowling ball that had tips in it. And what the mm -hmm. tips do is they help with that spin action and it, they take your form and you do a natural curve with your hand. And with the way the ball's released, you get a little bit of a hook on that. So starting my junior year, I started throwing with the hook. The problem, Ray, with me and bowling, we practiced at different lanes than we actually had our matches at. Mm -hmm. And oil patterns mean a lot at our practice lanes there wasn't much oil on the lane. So my ball was hooking and spinning like crazy. And I would often have a better practice average because I tried to throw with the spin against the oil pattern in the matchups where they douse those lanes with oil. My ball didn't spin as effectively. And I always told my coach about that. And she claimed that it was kind of BS 
It's what not I would BS think. at all. It's not, dude. No. It's clear no. when you're, and you could easily tell because the ball, how much oil it retains afterwards. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that that's why my practice average was about 10 pins higher than my match average. Did it matter? Were there differences too, synthetic and wood? The lanes themselves, or were they all like wood or synthetic? I mean, I that I cannot answer, but okay. at the same time, the, the oil pattern, I can tell you for sure, it impacted a lot of us. And well, I just wish, and look, I know the other lanes were closer and we weren't good enough to be in the conference where the matches were there, but I would have rather taken the extra 15 minutes to drive to the lanes where we were actually having our matches at so we can develop further our throws as the most improved in the captain of the team you it sounds like you also should have been the coach because of the coach to tell you that the oil pattern doesn't matter that coach doesn't know what the hell they're talking about. yeah i don't understand that too and it's funny because i went to the same high school as my mom she was my mom's gym teacher too okay so just fun fact well question for you by the way here justin from one of our users sal uh, sal says I think yep. I, I think after of all fancy segments, he should take an over the shoulder, no look shot at the hoop in the background there to close it out. It would be a nice touch if he makes it. I know. You know what? Number one, that's a great idea. Number two, I don't want there to be too much downtime. I'd have to get because if I'm throwing this at it, I'm gonna break something, and I've got a <laughs> lot of broadcaster bobbleheads back there. But what I will start to do is I will start to bring in the little like Nerf ball I have with it, and okay. then every day before I leave. I'll take one shot. I'll do it like Harlem Globetrotter style when Rainbow goes to center court and throws it over his head from his knees. So I'll do something like that. That'll become our tradition, right? Okay. I got the old Logan Allen behind me here and my <laughs> and he's got a baseball that's in midair. So that's you should just close. you should have like a screensaver that rotates every like five minutes with like just a different random player from the last like 35 years. I should, but I've I've continued this as I were March 26th, every day thus far. I've had a different picture in the background. So we're, we're keeping the dream alive that we're going to do it all 365 until we do that, Justin. Let's get back to hoops. Um, LeBron James is doubtful tonight. You joke all with me all the time. He's always questionable. I guess he's doubtful tonight. <laughs> what happens here? What do the Lakers do with him out of the mix? So with that, I mean, obviously, Anthony Davis becomes a prioritized play. But at the same time, it's a nine-point spread on this game. And that just shows you what the books think of the Los Angeles Lakers tonight. So you're looking at someone who actually had a good game, but he doesn't always have good games. More of a GPP option, how do I attack this, Ray? Austin Reeves, again, coming off a good game where he scored 25 and had eight against Indiana. Tonight in a similarly paced game against a team defense that's not going to be able to contain him. Milwaukee is better defensively with Chris Middleton back in that lineup. But cash play and one of my favorite plays of the night, and this directly translates to when LeBron James is in or out. LeBron James right now doubtful. We find out he gets ruled out. D'Angelo Russell in my core four for tonight. The price is mid. It's at 7-2. I think that's very, very fair for him. Again, high-octane environment. Destroyed the matchup last time out. And I don't care. You could put Beverly on him. You could put Beasley on him. You could try to put Damian Lillard on him. That would be a mistake. LeBron James is probably not playing in this game. My first look is D'Angelo Russell, Ray. I feel like you got to core him here. You're either going in a four-gamer from this stars and scrubs, or you're going a little bit more balanced. As of this moment, I'm trying to think of a more balanced approach, even though it's only the four games. You mentioned Milwaukee. Uh, let's talk about Dame Lillard and De'Aaron Fox. Price similarly on DraftKings tonight. Which of those two guys would you rather have in a lineup? And it's because, you know, it's 840 in the morning, Justin, so we're going to hold you to it. But which of the two guys, Darren Fox or Damian Lillard, are you looking at tonight? So if Chris Middleton was still out, I'd instantly say Damian Lillard. But for some reason, I'm still going to Fox now. Both Sacramento and Dallas played last night. So you got the, you know, it kind of cancels out the tired legs. But I'll say this with De'Aaron Fox. I mean, he's in an excellent spot tonight. He's been coming through on the value standpoint, both right under 9K, which is why I like them. If I am going to go with this balanced approach, then I'm probably going to look at Russell and one of Fox or Lillard as my main payups. Unless, again, I go stars and scrubs and I go for one of the highest priced guys. Ultimately, Ray, this is something I'm going to be watching all throughout the night who gives a stronger return. I think De'Aaron Fox, to me, is a little bit safer than Damian Lillard. We'll have to see what happens, but the matchup for both, absolutely incredible. Great game environments. Lillard's matchup, probably a little bit better, but Milwaukee now at full strength. I think there might be a fewer shots to go around than he would normally get if Middleton was out. So I have a little bit more trust in Fox because of that. Elite Sports Game Time, Monday through Thursday on Sirius XM Fantasy Sports, rated from 8 to 10. Justin and myself host that, and the other night we had Brandon Ingram's injury occur while we were doing the show, and uh, he's always out for the Pelicans now. So 
What's the offense looking like? Like who's stepping up here with the, the loss of Ingram on that side? Big decision we're going to have to make, Ray. Zion Williamson, is it even worth it to pay him? Because now these sites have him up to 9K, and that's a major investment right there. I just mentioned to you two players that have more control over the rock that are cheaper than Zion Williamson. So it's going to be a lot more Zion here, but the Pelicans like to play him at the five at times too, and that's actually, I think, where he best fits. I want to see this guy more in the post. He should be smashing when it comes to the boards every single night. Now some of their utility players we got to talk about. I mean, CJ McCollum gets a natural boost, but then you've got to look at some of their other forwards. We're trying to make Herb Jones a thing. We need a little bit more out of him. That's the problem with Herb Jones. Trey Murphy, we like the shooting, but the shooting could be a little bit more volatile. So it makes me want to go after Herb Jones, who's cheaper. But in this matchup tonight against the Thunder, you can get to their guard forwards a little bit. I have a feeling that Josh Giddy is going to be on C.J. McCollum a lot because why wouldn't they do that? Giddy's a better defender, and McCollum is now their certified second option on that team. Limit him, make Zion beat you, tire him out, then challenge someone else to beat you. So with that right there, I'm thinking that you're looking at a nice matchup in that small forward, that midcourt area, and that's where guys like Murphy and Herb Jones and even Najee Marshall come into play as well. And again, Justin, I can follow all these storylines tonight on Elite Sports 8 to 10, Monday through Thursday, Elite Sports game time. Uh, who, if we're looking at tonight's action, Justin, is someone we might be considering putting some cash on? Who we might we be wagering on? Is there someone that you pinpointed in your early research that you're kind of keying on right now? I mean, Russell, I immediately think, and I have to check what the line is at this moment here. I wouldn't be surprised if the books pulled this, though. I'm going to be watching his points and assists. I really don't think LeBron James is playing tonight. So that puts me some trust there. That adds a lot of usage to Russell as well. Again, a high-octane environment. I'm probably looking at some kind of combination of points, assists, or points plus assists there, Ray. And that's something that I'm trying to see if I can accomplish in a high-octane game. Also, I want to look from the Sacramento side and see if I want to go after DeMontis Sabonis' scoring tonight. I think that this spread being low is an indicator for us that this game is going to be close. And that's where I think for Sabonis tonight, he's going to have to attack the rim. Every time I seem to think that, though, he ends up going under. But again, you've got some tired legs here, so including Daniel Gafford. So I think that he'll be able to score on him. So initially where I'm looking is there. But one more player that I'll also be looking at. He has been coming through lately, but against Steph Curry, no disrespect, Ray, that I think we can see a little bit of a bounce back. And you'll see it in my article that will be posted a little bit earlier today as I am daddy daycare for most of the afternoon. Terry Rozier in a nice spot against Steph Curry. I'm putting a little, little bit more trust into him tonight. For all of Justin's work and all the crew's work, you can see it there on the screen. We've got the NBA all-in package. We just dropped the price down to $39.99. All the DFS, all the wagering for basketball, but that plan also includes NHL, MMA, racing, golf, all of it. So you get all of Justin's work in the crew on all those sports for DFS and wagering. So sign up now. Again, we just dropped it down to $39.99. Justin, before we let you go, looking at the slate tonight, you're sharing a lot here with the listeners. You'll have more in the article over at fantasyguru.com. Any lower level guys, any value plays that you've identified for this evening's slate thus far? I mean, some of the guys that I really, you know, am interested in that are a little bit on the cheaper side. Again, I want to try to go after something with no Brandon Ingram. There's going to be a downgrade defense somewhere when it comes to the Pelicans. And I think that could be in that shooting guard area, which makes me take a long look at Josh Giddy for the night. He's able to run the floor, which I like very much. We got to watch for the Heat's utility players because they've got three of their guard forwards and even one of their power forwards that are right now questionable. So we'll have to see if Kevin Love plays, if Hawkes plays, and of course about whether or not we're going to get some value out of the Miami Heat. So that's something, Ray, that we're going to be watching all into the 6 p.m. Eastern hour because whoever plays from that bunch is someone that we're going to want to invest in. And then a couple of other guys that I'm looking at for value tonight besides whatever we get from the Heat. Keegan Murray, someone that Armando Marcel talked about last night, had himself a nice game. I think with the Mavs, they're pretty weak against forwards, so Keegan Murray can have himself a game with him. He kind of flies under the radar, also under 6K. We like that as well. Justin Fenceman there. Fence, where can the folks find you on social media? You can find me on X and also on Instagram, at Fence Sports. there, always following everything NBA and some others as well. I try to have some fun, maybe a little Sopranos references here and there too, Ray. You got to have fun on social. It can't be all business. 
Absolutely. And and just to give people kind of the lay of the land, if they thinking of signing up for the package, the all-in package again over at fantasyguru.com, you're you and the, the crew that you're also in Discord answering questions, right? You're not just posting an article and then you bail. You're around to help people with questions with their lineup, right? No, absolutely. I mean, what we do is, and whether it's a small slate, more of a small slate, if we have a two or three gamer, you might not see the written up article there, but we're in Discord, absolutely. But when it comes to those other slates that you barely get those anyway. So when you get to the four games or more, you know, we're doing the write-ups, we're doing the cheat sheets in NBA. And yes, we are in discord from probably around Ray when I'm in there, it's like normally around 5 45 to 6 PM all the way through lock. We'll answer some questions after lock as well with of course, late swap. Hopefully they don't eliminate it, but yeah, discord's half the battle, Ray too much volatility with the injuries. And it's often that our articles, I don't want to say become useless, but it gets eaten alive when all of a sudden you have some of those random injuries there. So Discord's almost like a live action article before the live action Elite Sports Game Time Show. There it is, and that's why that that's what we call a tease, a tie in. What do we call that in in radio, Justin? Just nice good little work. Trans, nice little transition to the promotion of the show. Yeah, there you go. There it is. You can see it on the screen. Monday. I'm, never, I'm not a producer or anything. Like no, that. not. Justin was a producer for a decade. Don't let him tell you. Um, <laughs> Justin, thanks for joining us today. Really appreciate it. I'll talk to you again tonight on the Elite Sports Game Time. Uh, every, again, everyone, follow his work on all the places we talked about, including the all-in package at fantasyguru.com. Get it now. You get all the sports. It's only $39.99 to get Justin's articles and insights for both the wagering and the DFS side of things in basketball. Thank you, Justin. Go spend some time with your daughter. Get ready for the show tonight. We'll talk to you tonight. Thank you so much, Ray. You got it, buddy. Justin Fensterman of FantasyGuru.com. So that's the rundown today, folks. Uh, I'm looking at the news reports here. I don't see anything that's popping. Um, the, the Rockies officially announced that Ezekiel Tovar's seven-year contract with the club uh, is, is real. We all kind of knew that. It was reported it could be up to $84 million. So another one of the young players signing a big-level contract with the the Rockies. Uh, looking at the, the, the chat room, uh, Sal, yeah, Sal and I are on the same wavelength today. I guess that's how it goes sometimes, Sal. Great minds think alike, as they say, uh, all the time. So head over to fantasyguru.com, get the all-in package, get the football package, $19.99, all the preseason coverage uh, through the draft. You get all the reviews of, of all the player movement and free agency. That's available for fantasyguru.com's football package. Uh, you can still sign up over at RT Sports, rtsports.com slash fantasyguru dash baseball. There's uh, promo codes for discounts and all that kind of stuff there as well. So rtsports.com slash fantasyguru dash baseball. That's the place you want to go for that. Uh, and then, you know, I'm here every day. Fantasy Sports Daily, 11 o'clock Eastern, Monday through Friday. Use that promo code FSD20 to sign up for the products over at fantasyguru.com. Have a great Tuesday, folks. I'll be back with you all tomorrow. Uh, and uh, Wednesday's my big day. One hour with you here in the morning, three hours with Jeff Manns on the Elite Sports Show on Sirius XM. And then two two hours at night with Justin on Elite Sports Game Time. So got to rest the vocal cords for my six-hour weekly Wednesday fun time. Hope you'll join me then and hope you join me every day here on Fantasy Sports Daily, powered by FantasyGuru.com. Take care. <laughs>